Okay, Carlos, thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to sit down with us. So um, maybe you can just tell us a little bit about how this tournament has gone so far and how the players are enjoying their time in Hong Kong. Yeah, I think, um, thanks for having me. Um, Squash-wise, it's been fantastic. It's only been two days, but every time I think about it, it's like I'm counting the days back and I'm like, oh, it's only three more days, just three more days, right? I wish this could last for like 10, 10 more days or something. Um, in terms of squash, it's been uh, such a good quality of squash since day one. From day one, the players were very switched on and they wanted to really win and the, the matches were super, super, very good quality. And uh, hopefully it continues like that to the rest of the tournament. Um, when you, I mean, as a player or as an organizer, when you're thinking about this kind of tournament where it's like two back to back, is there anything that you have in mind? I mean, yeah, from the player perspective, like how do you prepare for those kinds of, you know, staying in one place and playing two tournaments at once? Does that affect your... Yeah, well, as, a, as an organizer now, it was the only, the only way we could put a tournament in the club was um, after the Hong Kong Open because it's so much hassle to do only one tournament, especially for the players where they come here, they still have to sort of quarantine for two days and do the paperwork and the testing and all that. Um, that's a bit of a hassle, but at the same time, if you manage to put two tournaments together, then it makes sense for them to come all the way to Hong Kong. So as you know, after two days, you're, you're free and you can do what you want. Um, so I think as a, as a uh, timeline and, and date-wise, it worked really well for us. Uh, perhaps the only, the only downside to it is when the players lose first round in the first tournament and then they don't stand here until eight, nine days after. So it feels like they have been here for three months, but... Uh, I guess if they do well in the first tournament, then it's only like two, three days in between, so it really works for them. Um, are there any tournaments where you like that you personally really enjoyed, or that when you're you know you're planning a, a tournament like this, that you kind of try to keep some things in mind of like this is something that you've seen done really well before? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we we've got very very good hospitality here at the football club. Um, we can use all the facilities. They have the gym. Unfortunately, the weather. It's been good, but it's a little bit chilly this time of the year. Um, otherwise, they could have used the pool and um, sportsman's bar is open. They have the football and the World Cup. And um, in terms of facilities, it's been great. Then I tried to add the little, what we do in the interviews here, where was not here the last tournaments that I played here. Now we have the little lounge with a, the players can watch the games there. They can watch um, how the match before they play is going on without having to be on the court. It's noisy and crowded, so they can kind of come and hear and relax. They had a fee seal there. Um, they have a coffee station. They have snacks. And so, of course, when, when I've played 12 years on tour, probably that makes maybe 150 or 200 tournaments. So you always try to take bits and pieces. But um, Hong Kong is so convenient for that, right? Um, they're staying next door at the door set, which is only like a one-minute walk. Uh, for them so they can literally jump out of bed and come for practice um, there's so many restaurants around and um, in, in terms of facilities and equipment and all that we have all we need so we we just trying to make sure the players all they have to do is think about uh, their matches right so just focus on your match nothing else is going to disturb you and uh, that way you'll help them to to perform better I've played tournaments where there's so many things that you cannot control that when you get to your match time, you're so stressed. Mm -hmm. I, I've played in India before where the traffic mm -hmm. um, destroys your day. You don't really know what's going to happen. The food is not quite safe as well. And there's so, so many different tournaments that um, um, you cannot control things. And I feel like here, everything is sort of under control. Mm -hmm. So that hopefully is going to help the players to perform. And how about, I mean, like, you're kind of thinking about a lot of the stuff that you're really happy that you've done well. Is there anything that you kind of thinking for next year that you might add or take away or change? Yeah, I mean, that, that all, always depends on the, bud, on the budget, right? I would love to have a, a glass court on the football pitch or maybe a glass court on the sports hall with big awesome. screens yeah. and, 
have squash TV around. But obviously, that's, that's very um, unrealistic if we don't manage to raise a little bit more of sponsorship. If we do that, I can tell you with the more money we have, we can put such a big uh, event here. But obviously, that's depending on how, how the budget does. Um, I think we've managed to do pretty well. Obviously, there's always bits and pieces. I mean, I would like to improve a little bit on the streaming. Obviously, the, the refs that we have at this time, they're uh, international qualifying refs, but they are Hong Kong local refs. Um, I'm not saying they're good or bad, but obviously there's always a little bit of a room for improvement. Um, I don't know, things like, yes, yeah, I said, streaming and things like that, they can always improve. But I think we've got all the basics covered. All the areas are kind of well covered. Maybe nothing spectacular, but um, um, I think the players cannot complain because uh, we've got everything ready for them. Yeah, and we've spoken to to a bunch of the to a bunch of the guys, and they're all super happy. Um, they've had a great experience, and we've got what four matches tonight. We've got a quarterfinals tonight from five p.m. till um, nine p.m. We have, then we have one of our events, which uh, we're going around the the island on a tram, uh, have a few sparkling waters there, and. Uh, spend some time with the, with the sponsors and the players. Um, so yeah, now only, as I was saying in the beginning, only seven matches to go for the whole tournament, right? Time, time flies and it's only three days remaining, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully we can watch uh, some good quality squash. And is there like a particular match that you're really looking forward to tonight? Yeah, n not really. I haven't had the time to watch a full game itself because there's always bits and pieces to cover. But as long as they perform, I mean, these guys are, I think apart from one or two, they are now all inside of the top 20 in the world. So I love watching them all. I love watching Abu Dhar. He's been out of the game for a year. Yesterday he played a hell of a game. It was such a good quality game to watch. Um, Marwan is always, I learned a lot from my, watching Marwan, how, how smart he is, how strong he is. I think Masson, um, Anyone who likes squash loves a massive uh, squash yeah, match. Um, Solomon is very fit. I mean, I, I think we, we're going to watch some very good squash. Hopefully they'll perform, no injuries, and see if uh, we can see a lot of fight setters. Um, and so obviously now, you know, your main responsibility is working with, with the juniors. So is there anything that you'd like the juniors to, like, really take away from? I mean, we're so lucky to have this tournament here, right? Is there something that you'd really like the juniors to be able to, to gain from having this here? Yeah, I think I think where we are lacking a lot in Hong Kong, or maybe worldwide as well, is that the juniors don't watch squash. I mean, they can come to an odd lesson a week, once a week. They can do how, as many private lessons as they want. But if they don't watch real squash, then they're, they're not going to learn how the players prepare for a match, how they approach a match, how, how the game is played under which certain situations. I think every, every little kid should, number one, listen to the coaches. Number two, watch as much squash as you can. Because you always get, that goes into your brain and uh, it goes into your system. So hopefully they can come and watch a lot of uh, good matches and they can take the most out of it. Awesome. Well, like I said, I mean, we're so lucky to have this tournament here. We're so glad that it's, that it's gone so well this year and looking forward to doing it again in the future. For sure. Thank you. Thank you guys for you so helping much. with the tournament as well. Without the volunteers, this will not uh, be happening because the amount of work that is goes behind the scenes, you guys know. So um, thanks for helping as well. Thank Cheers. you so much, Carlos. Appreciate it.